could you help a sister out? Like, I will repay you. You can ask for repayment. You can say, hey, I'll repay you. What's up you guys, it's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. So I just wanna say thank you to all of you for joining me on this journey. Really, really appreciate you guys. So if I haven't said it in a while, this is my time saying it to you guys now. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, and if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe right now and join me on this journey. So you guys, um, for those of you who are like, man, you know what? Uh, PA school is expensive. Expensive. It is. It definitely is. And some PA schools are more expensive than others. So it's very, 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 very important that you figure out how you're going to pay for PA school. So you got into PA school, you're happy, you're enjoyed, or you're thinking about PA school. Now, how are you going to pay for it? Right? Like, what are you gonna do? And that is what this video is gonna be about, how to pay for PA school. Many people go the traditional route, and that traditional route is through a loan. So you can go through um, FAFSA. I know a lot of my cohort classmates did that. Um, they went through FAFSA to fill out that application. Um, it's based on either your parents or yours, IRS and your W-2 forms, and it will actually, like, populate different scholarships and loans and, and government federal loans that you can actually use to pay for PA school. So I know that's like a good option for some people. They choose that route because you know, they don't have a hundred thousand, eighty thousand dollars just laying around um, waiting for them so that they can pay for PA school. So that is the route that they choose. And um, if you haven't already thought of FAFSA or if you've never filled out a FAFSA, um, go ahead and get started on that application right now because they need like different information for you. And the earlier you apply for FAFSA, the better because there are some government grants and loans that kind of get taken up um, sooner on depending on how many people are applying and are eligible. So it's important for you to actually apply and fill out your FAFSA early in the year if especially you think that you're gonna get into PA school this year or um, within a year or um, if you've already gotten into PA school. So that is one route. Now, another route is to go to the personal loan. So you can do a personal loan, a private loan, that's not through FAFSA, not through federal funding, you know, through your local bank. And I know there are some pretty like decent looking loans, especially for the medical and healthcare field. I know like Discovery Health has, has like a health one, you know, for like, student loans. I know SunTrust does. I think PNC does as well. Um, the one that I was really interested in was Wells Fargo. And I mean, I know y'all, I know we're feeling a little kind of shaky right now <laughs> for Wells Fargo because of the whole thing that they were embroiled in last year with, you know, that little big like scandal thing. I get it. I get it. All right. I get it, you guys. But their student loan was like really, really appealing. Um, it was made specifically for people in like healthcare professions or going back to school, like, you know, your NPs, your PAs, your um, dentists, your physicians. And it, I think their, their cap is like $120,000 per year. And then you don't have to start repaying it until two years after you've gotten out of PA, like, well, school, whatever school you're in. So that was like really appealing because it gives you time to like prepare. Because let's say, for instance, you know, you're 23, 24, 25, you're still able to live at home with your family, your parents, you don't have like, you know, a wife or a husband, and you're able to like save money while living with family. That is big because you'll be able to now come ahead and save up from the money that you're making while you're in your respective careers and you can put that towards your loan. So that is like a really, really good option for many people. Another option is your grants and your scholarships. And again, I know that FAFSA does, I think they send you some of the grants, but you can also go to your financial aid counselor at your respective PA schools or whatever school you're entering into. And they will have like a list of the different scholarships that the school may offer or that 
Other people may offer, you know, people in the healthcare system that they work with. I know my particular school has a healthcare system that they're closely related to that offers a scholarship to students in their second year. And so that's really like important because you're able to now pay for the majority, you know, like half over 50% or at least 50% of your tuition. And then that's one less burden that you have to worry about. Now you just have to concern yourself with, okay, well, how do I take care of the other half? And it's less money that you may have to come up with. Maybe you're able to actually borrow that from friends and family. So, you know, that is an option. Go the scholarship and grants route. It's tedious work because a lot of them require you to write essays and things like that. But I mean, it's essentially free money. So definitely think about that. You also have your loan repayment program. So I know that if you were already working, some, some places their jobs will uh, pay for them to go to school in a sense um, through a loan repayment program. But there is this thing, uh, it's kind of like Teach for America, I think is what it was called for the teachers, where you go in kind of underserved populations and you teach the kids in that area and it helps to pay for your graduate degree or your schooling that you actually took to become a teacher. And we have that same thing in the medical field. I think it's your like National Service Corps, I believe is what it's called. I will definitely look that information up for you and just kind of leave a link in like right here, link right here for you guys. Um, so you can actually go and look into that. But I know that you owe them, I guess you owe them time um, in an underserved area and they will pay for your schooling. So that is something to look into. Um, I'm not really sure of all of the amount, if it's the whole thing, if it's part of it, 50%, but that's all information that you guys can go and find for yourself and see if that's something that you wanna do. If you're already gonna work in, let's say a free clinic or you know an underserved populated area, if that's already your passion, then this might be a great option for you. Also, you know, you can go we're in this age of like social media. I'm here on YouTube, you know, we have Instagram and then we have like GoFundMe, right? We have all of these different kind of crowdfunding websites. Uh, so that is an option, you guys. Don't like, don't be afraid to ask your friends and family, okay? You can crowdfund. I know some of you are very privileged and that's okay. That is okay that you have a mom who is a physician or an uncle who is the CEO of Pfizer and that is all right. Go hit Uncle Pfizer up, you know, go ask him, uncle, I'm trying to, you know, better the world. Could you help a sister out? Like, I will repay you. You can ask for repayment. You can say, hey, I'll repay you. I'll give you, I'll write up a contract, whatever it is, you guys, don't be ashamed. Don't be, because you're bettering yourself and you're gonna in turn better the community that you serve. And so it's gonna be important for you to just kind of like, Swallow your pride, take a little bit of that humble juice and go ahead and ask. Ask your friends and family. Not everybody has Uncle Pfizer, but that's okay. Um, you can just ask mom and dad and cousin and sister and brother and friend from high school, you know, make a nice video. I did it, I, I made a video. I was like, y'all, I need to pay for my initial entrance into PA school. Could you please help me out? And if I hadn't have asked, I wouldn't be here right now in PA school because that is what like helped propel me and I was able to actually get some money to help me pay for PA school. So do it, you guys. Do it, okay? That's an option. Crowdfund. Don't be afraid to do this, okay? Lastly, I think that um, this is also important, especially for those of you that are in the armed services or military and you're thinking about becoming a PA. I don't know like the specific different branches, but um, you know, you're you're trying to do the medic thing. You want to be a PA in the military or in the armed services. And so I know that they have routes of paying for that, helping you pay for it. Uh, I don't know exactly how much it is, uh, if it's, again, 50% or all of it, or um, you just give back time. I know my friend, he went to school. He was in the military. He's a physician. He went to school and he owes nothing. Um, he owes them nothing but his time. Uh, and so he's out of school, $300,000 debt free. And that that is great. So it's a great option for some of you. If you're already in the military, if this is something that you already have dedicated your life to, or if you're thinking about it, look into it. Look into it because that is a way to pay for PA school. And um, I think the 
just the kind of blatant just hey this is like this is something that you can do is just plan right you know save up y'all if y'all know that y'all trying to apply to pa school within the next two years go ahead and start working your behind off and save now start saving now because let's say you're able to pocket twenty thousand dollars within the next two years or thirty or forty thousand dollars for a lot of pa schools that's like 50 to 60 70 percent of their tuition for both years because you're you're paying like thirty five thousand twenty thousand dollars a year so that's that's a big chunk of money. If you're able to get twenty thousand dollars, that might be like half of your PA schooling right there. So don't be afraid to just work hard and actually save. Uh, I know that it is not necessarily what everybody wants to hear. It's not the easiest route, but it's definitely a practical route, and it's something that everybody can do with respect to just kind of getting out there and doing as much work and as many jobs as you possibly can. Save up, prepare yourself, and um, put that away in a nice little savings where it can even gain interest and then when you get into PA school you may not even have to ask anybody for help because you did it yourself so that's it those are my tips y'all I hope you guys um, you know take this and take this into consideration and take it to heart um, go ahead and look at the website that I'm gonna leave for you all and um, hopefully you guys find some ways to pay for PA school uh, I am so excited for everybody that has gotten into PA school and that is thinking about PA school um, and planning for PA school, uh, please do your due diligence and do your research. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right, y'all, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at PA. And I will talk to you guys next time.